I'm Tom Anthony. I live in Mansfield, Texas, and I served in Vietnam uh, from three tours in Vietnam, 67, 68, and my last tour was in 1969. Uh, I was in a shipwreck in, in June 3rd, 1969 with Australian Care Melbourne. It was uh, doing exercises with uh, other navies in the vicinity of off the coast of Vietnam, close to Saigon. Uh, on June 3rd, 1969, a big accident happened. Uh, the aircraft carrier cut our destroyer in half right at midships, and I was a radarman uh, at that time. And I got off watch at midnight. Uh, a guy named Greg Sage, my best friend, relieved me off the radar scope that night, and he had two other brothers that were on the ship also. And uh, <clears throat> I got off the watch and went down to my bunk, and uh, it was under the mess decks, two flights down. And so I went uh, to sleep, starboard bunk, middle bunk. And so I guess it was about 3 o'clock, 3.15 in the morning, I heard this big bang coming through. It left of me, it was like water gushing in, and just like metal on a train running through a metal building. So uh, it knocked me to the bulkhead, to the floor, and uh, it was pitch dark, and all I could see was uh, a little light at the bottom of the stairwell. And they always told us if we lose power, just make your way to the stairwell and there'll be a light and that's the bottom of the stairwell. So I made my way up over the air conditioning unit. It's pitch dark. Uh, water's coming in to my left. I was in my underwear. We didn't have time to get her clothes on or anything. It happened so quick. So I got to the ladder and I heard guys yelling this way, this way. So I started climbing up the ladder and it, the ship was turning at the time to the, port, to the starboard side from port. And I went up the ladder in about a 45 degree angle. So straight up, it was turning left. So I got into the mess decks, the tables were anchored, and so I got up on the side of the table and walked on the side of the table for the floor while it was turning over. And it, I remember it ran, it uh, uh, came back to the port side and threw me up against the bulkhead. Then I got back on the, uh, the uh, table again at that time, made my way through the mess line, saw another line, and there was a mess line there where we'd come down and get our trays and eat chow and stuff. So I made my way up through the mess line, got to the hatch, and there was Bob Platt, a friend of mine, in front of me, and me and Del Francis behind me. So I looked over Del Francis' shoulder. At this time, the water was coming up through the hatch that I uh, just came out of the mess line, mess decks, to the mess line, and water was sucking my buddies back down. I could see them getting sucked back down into the mess, mess decks. So I um, got to the hatch, it was jammed, couldn't get out. So the water was coming up on us, and I'm still dry. I hadn't got any water on me at all. Still been above the water line. Uh, at that time, it went left to starboard side real hard and threw us up against the bulkhead again in the mess line there. Now all of a sudden, somebody from outside must have climbed aboard the ship and swam back from the bridge area that went in the water and uh, opened the hatch, and all I remember was seeing stars and smoldering computers from the radar to my left, and I just knew all the radar guys were dead, probably about 15 of them in radar. Uh, yeah, I went over to the other side, the port side, and it was upside down, pretty much, and I pulled myself up and put my leg up on the side. At that time, I stood up and it started rolling. We kind of walked on the bottom of the ship when it rolled over to the starboard side, it went under the water completely. The nose of the uh, uh, ship raised out of the water, and uh, I walked on it, and all of a sudden we knew it was going to go under. So me and Dale Francis and Bob Platt were the only three on the bottom of the ship. And so we jumped in the water and started swimming out. And I remember swimming about 50 yards and rolling over on my back. 
and uh, I saw the ship upside down with a number 754 sticking out with big bubbles. It was going under and it was swirling like a whirlpool there. So I saw it go down and then all of a sudden, that's when I said, you know, I'm getting a little scared here now. I, I, I just reacted to get out at the time. And when I got in the water and it went down, I just realized I'm in the South China Sea and uh, I swam to some debris floating in the water. It's a fender, a big rubber thing about as big as a trash can. So I swam to that, hung on to that. And then about a minute later, the, sh the ship's captain, uh, Albert McLemore, he swam over to me, and I'll never forget the words he said when he swam up to me. He says, Anthony, what happened? And I said, sir, I think that carrier just cut us right in half. And he said, oh my God. And I looked to the left, and the carrier was just like standing right up on top of us. And But it was like maybe two, three hundred yards away, but they're so big, it was just like looking straight up at him. Well, the Mike boat from the Australians, uh, were, was launched and they were picking up survivors and this all happened probably within two, two and a half minutes. Uh, how I got out, I don't know, but I think God lit, had that light there for me to make my way out, led me out. And uh, I wasn't a real religious person at the time, but that night I believe I looked back and that's when I gave my life to my Lord and Savior, you know, Jesus Christ. And uh, it just led me to the light. And this day, I think the light is his, his light. So uh, they picked me up out of the water and uh, got in the mic boat. And we went over and we had to climb up the netting to the carrier to get up out of the, out of the water and everything. Um, I was saved out of the 84 men that were in the front. I'm one of the 10 survivors. And uh, to this day, you know, I just thank, thank God for letting me... Uh, live so I can have the family I have right now. And uh, got a wonderful family, and uh, thank God that uh, he's saved me that night.